Is it too late to start your career in cybersecurity and pen testing in 2024? With the continuous rise of cyber threats and breaches, many people are considering a career in the field, but unsure whether it's still a viable option. Well, today we'll look at the current state of the industry, the pros and cons of starting your journey, and how you can create opportunities to land your first role. As always, if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. Do you worry about privileged access Brawl in your organization. Uncontrolled privileged accounts are a prime target for attackers. A single compromised account can grant access to your entire network. And that's why at TCM, we trust Keeper. Keeper's zero trust privileged access management brings together password, passkey, secrets, and connections management into one control plane for effortless security and usability. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless, and clientless and has no implementation fees. If you're looking for a new solution to secure every user and every device, then check out keeper.io forward slash TCM to schedule a quick demo with their awesome team. First, let's talk about the current state of cybersecurity. The demand for skills is still high, but a lot of that is also for intermediate and senior roles. Reading into industry reports, however, this tells us that the industry as a whole is still growing, and so the demand at all levels is likely to be increasing. And as usual, we're going through continuous transitions in all industries to new technologies. For example, the rise of AI and the continued increase in popularity of IoT devices and also the use of blockchain technology. All of these things bring opportunities to the table, but from a security perspective, some challenges too. So overall, we know that pen testing and cybersecurity jobs won't simply flop and disappear. They are here for the long run, but let's take a look at some of the challenges. While the demand for roles like pen testers is high, there are several challenges that we need to be aware of. We all know that the field is now super competitive and with the increasing awareness of cybersecurity as an industry, more and more people are entering the field, making it more important to stand out. And generally, this means that having the right skills, a certification, also the right attitude and soft skills is crucial. Now, not all people recruit like this, and I'm not here to argue the right and wrong way to hire, but personally, all of the people I've hired in the past over the years have been hired because they had the right attitude and because I thought they would fit well or work well with my current teams. It takes a lot of time and effort and testing to really build a high performing team and then more effort to protect them so that they can continue to thrive. And that doesn't just mean I'm hiring the confident extrovert every time who can talk really well. I'm looking for people who work well with others on large projects, will follow interesting ideas and lean more towards solutions than problems. And striking a balance between people with an engineering mindset which is more building things that are solid, and those with a researcher mindset, which might go against the standard approach, but given the context, sometimes find a better solution. And this is really important. Diversity is definitely something to strive for when you're working on a complex and technical project. Now, competition is fierce, and we all know that. Everybody's CV is going to have some skills and a certification and a side project, maybe a lot of bug bounty. And so network is becoming, I think, more important important to overcome this challenge of competition. And so I think that's probably the biggest challenge for entering the industry. But another one is that studying and working on side projects and gaining certifications all takes time and the cost on some certifications can be extremely high. For me, my life is basically AppSec and taking care of my two cats. But for others, you might be providing for a whole family, commuting, working long hours, or you may have some other passion that takes up your time. So this can be a challenge. And what I'd recommend is temper your expectations based on how much time you actually have available and don't sacrifice things like your health or sleep for it. It can be difficult to prioritize sometimes if you're short on time, but following a course consistently instead of jumping around from courses to YouTube to CTFs to side projects is really going to help you make the most out of your time if you don't have much of it. So now let's explore 
explore how we might be able to create opportunities to land our first role. And the first one that we're going to talk about is the internal transfer. Many companies support their staff in terms of their skill development and expressing an interest in working with a specific team or joining a project can be a great way to transition into a cybersecurity role. At many of my previous jobs, I've had people from other teams shadow myself and my team and eventually join us. And occasionally the other way around too. I've had team members that have decided that they wanted to go in a slightly different direction with their career. And so they went off and did that. So even if to begin with, it's just shadowing a team for an hour a week or sitting in on a project planning meeting, putting yourself on the scene and getting to know the security team is essential in laying down the groundwork for when an opportunity does come up. And sometimes this alone can grow into an opportunity itself. In a similar vein, we have networking, and this can look very different from person to person, but if there are meetups or events nearby, then you should definitely go to them. And personally, I like to go to the OWASP meetups here in London, and I'm not actually very good at talking to people that I don't know. And my conversations are at first usually pretty awkward, but somehow I always end up having a good time. And now that I know some of the other regulars that go, it's easy to catch up with them and and also meet people as part of a familiar group. And of course, more often than not, at these kinds of events, you'll hear about someone who is hiring or a role that's coming up, and you can get the jump on hundreds of other applicants that are going to apply. We also have networking through online communities, and it's no secret that Heath often hires from our community members. So even if it's not here at TCM, make sure that you're part of something and that you're contributing to that community. Some other things that you can do to set yourself apart and create opportunities might be having a social media presence. And if you can find a mentor, then by extension, your mentors network might be available to you and applying to speaker conferences or even just starting up a study group or a regular CTF team is going to give you some presence. And from that, opportunities can grow. The bottom line is really that you don't want to be just one of the hundreds of people applying for a role. Think about how you might might get directly in touch with the hiring manager or somehow be involved in the team already when a job opens up. Actually, something that I forgot to mention before is that often when someone leaves an organization, it leaves an open seat and that's generally easy to acquire if you're already working towards it internally. So looping back to the internal transfers, this has happened when I've left jobs in the past. The role has been given to someone that I was working with or mentoring or training and they were actively working towards building skills to that role and then once it opened up the organization just put them in it so the easiest way i think to get your foot in the door now, before we wrap up, we didn't get the chance to talk about making the most out of your current skills. And by this, I mean, maybe you have a background in graphic design or you worked in a factory or maybe you've worked in a different tech role, but whatever the skills you have, there's a way to make them applicable to cybersecurity or at the very least to a side project that's going to help you land your first role. So if you want to see an interview prep video where we talk about how to make the most out of the extra skills that you already have, then let me know down in the comments below. And to actually wrap up the video, if you are actively applying, then make sure you do the checklist of things you need. So learn about the role that you want, get an entry level certification, have a side project. And after that, or even while you're getting those things in order, work on creating these opportunities for yourself so that when an opportunity does come up, everything else is already in place and ready to go. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you next time.